Welcome to the podcast. Today we're having Kelly Hogue and she's a behavioral health advisor. So we're going to find out all about what that's like and how she can help people stick to their wellness goals. Have you ever thought about making your own podcast? I'm sure you have great ideas, but you just don't know where to begin. Well, here's where Anchor is going to be a lifesaver. It's a one-stop shop for creating and distributing any podcast. Best of all, it's 100% free. They have creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor then quickly distributes your podcast for you. So it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and so much more just with one click. You can make money from your podcast right away with no minimum listenership. That means easy access to sponsors. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So why don't you check out Anchor today? Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Welcome to the Kaka TV podcast, your source for all things health, happiness, and beauty. Kelly, thank you so much for being with us here today. Thanks for having me. Could you give us a little bit of your story, how you went from getting a master's of science and applied behavior analysis to becoming a health coach? Yeah, so I've always been interested in health. I've always been pretty healthy myself, um, but I've definitely always been interested in psychology. Um, and I got a job working with kids with autism kind of by accident. It was like the summer between college and I was so desperate for a job. And the only job that hired me was taking care of this kid with autism. And I was like, I have no idea what I'm doing. And I don't know why these people are trusting me, but okay, it's all I got. So I'll give it a shot. And I ended up falling in love with it. I was um, kind of mentored by one of his therapists. And she taught me applied behavior analysis. And from then on, I was just, I was just fascinated by behaviors and how um, reinforcement changes behaviors and how motivation plays an impact and all these different things when it comes to behavior to not only kids with autism, but just in our day-to-day lives. So I ended up getting my master's in that. And then I realized, like I said, like it's all the jobs pretty much for people studying applied behavior analysis are with kids with autism, right? Because it's super prevalent. And it's a big thing that we're trying to find answers for. But I realized when I had this big passion for, for health and for wellness, I felt like the missing link there was addressing behavior. So I figured, why not kind of bridge this gap and take my two passions and merge it into one thing? So that's how I came up with behavioral health advising. So there's so many health coaches out there now. What do you feel sets you apart and your methods apart? So that's a good question because that's a, I don't call myself a health coach for this exact reason because it's a lot more. So I did my, uh, I went through IIN, the Institute of Integrative Nutrition, because I felt like I needed a little bit more background when it came to health, but really my master's in behavior analysis. So that's always been my focus. So how I dress things differently is all through the behavior. So it's getting to the root of every problem that you feel like you're going through when it comes to health. And remember health is all encompassing. It's, it's the food you eat and exercise, of course, but it's also relationships. It's um, sleep. It's, you know, what's stressing you out and how are you dealing with that? So addressing all those things from a behavioral perspective instead of just band-aiding them is is the difference. And did you ever have a health journey of your own or were you always super healthy or did you have any obstacles to overcome? So I was raised really super healthy. My dad was vegetarian um, and growing up he would make all our meals, all our family dinners and I would eat really healthy like my friends did not want to come to my house because all I had was healthy snacks. So like I never had Dunkaroos or fruit roll-ups or anything like that. I would have to like sneak them out of friends' houses. But I grew up really healthy and I'm really, really appreciative of that. And I'm grateful for my parents for raising me that way. But then what's what's interesting is when I went to IAN and I was studying all these different methodologies 
ideologies when it comes to health and our bodies and eat this and not that, but do it like this and do it at this time, but not this time. And all these different things that were coming at me with research, conflicting research, I was so obsessed. And I got into this really kind of dark place of being obsessed with health and like wouldn't eat certain things and would only eat this. And it was just like two a day workouts and it got really intense and kind of dark. And I feel like this is something that people like don't really talk about when, you know, they're inundated with all this information about health. Um, even now, like you don't have to go to IIN to know that there's all these conflicting things, right? It can be on your Instagram feed when you're scrolling through, there's like intermittent fasting and keto and, and all these different things. It's like, what's right? So I was just kind of figuring it all out and doing it all. And then, um, restricting myself in too many ways and just doing a lot to my body that was really more harm than good and I just kind of took a step back and said like okay if I'm gonna help people navigate this I need to be able to navigate it myself so I used my own behavior techniques that I learned and kind of got myself out of it on the other end so when it comes to a truly healthy diet what are we supposed Mm -hmm. to do should we be keto paleo intermittent fast a little of everything, or just throw in the towel, give up. With all these diets out there, what are women supposed to do? Yeah, so this is a big thing, supposed to do, right? And should, what should we be doing? What are we supposed to be doing? And that's where it gets really tricky because that makes us feel like there's something we're not doing all the time. So what I'm a big believer in is what's going to be sustainable for you, right? So maybe keto is sustainable for some people, unlikely, but maybe. Um Maybe intermittent fasting is really sustainable for people, and that's how they feel really great. Maybe it's really unsustainable for other people. So how I figure this out with my clients, what's the best thing for them to do is to go through a phone call where we sit and go through um, what their goals are, right? So if you work a certain amount of hours or if you have a certain job or if you have kids or if you're in school, all these factors are going to contribute to the sustainability of any of the choices that you make when it comes to food exercise, sleep, stress. So in order for it to be sustainable, we kind of have to figure out, okay, what's, what's your schedule? Like, first of all, what are these, what are some factors in your life that are, you know, inevitable? Maybe it's kids, school, whatever. Um, what's prevented you from reaching your goals in the past? How can we get ahead of that now? And what's your motivation? Like what's really driving you? What are the emotions behind it? All that. So once we get the answers to those questions, um, then that creates more of a sustainable plan for us to then address the behaviors that want to be, you know, changed for there to be like a little bit more ease and happiness and joy when it comes to health. So let's say you work with someone and they find that perfect diet. Why is it still so hard to stick to the diet? So here's the thing. My, I, I don't, there's no one diet that I, that I believe in personally, not for me and not for most of my clients either. There is really, it, it can be a combination of things or nothing at all, but the, the common thread here is intuitive eating. And this is a big like buzzword lately is intuitive eating, listen to your intuition and yada, yada, yada. But what does that mean? Right? Like it sounds nice, but it can be really hard to get to. So it starts with something so small as like taking a breath before you eat and chewing your food and realizing um, how these flavors taste in your mouth and how the, the food is affecting your body. Is it giving you energy? Is it giving you some like belly troubles? What's happening? So all of these things are the basis of intuitive eating. So then from there, you're able to then notice some patterns and then make choices that are aligned with what's going to make you feel your best. Why then all those other diets are really hard to stick to, keto, intermittent fasting, whatever it might be, um, are because they're not sustainable for for the individual, for their schedule, for um, what makes them feel good. So like for me, I tried intermittent fasting for a while and I felt good, but it wasn't sustainable because part of what really I enjoy is going out to dinner you know, after the end of a work day with friends. So none of my friends are going to want to go to dinner at like five o'clock, right? Everyone's still working. So that to me is, is more like brings me more joy and being able to go, being able to go out socially for dinner than like stopping eating at five and, and feeling slightly better about it. Like, you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. So intuitive eating isn't like, I feel like having cookies, I guess I should have cookies. It's more like eat slowly see how your body is reacting 
and mm-hmm. then act accordingly. Totally. Because if you're depriving yourself and you're saying like, I'm never going to have cookies, right? Because cookies are, are deemed bad. Then you're likely going to go through a period where you're not eating cookies. And then you're going to kind of hit a breaking point where we're like, I really want cookies. Like, screw this. I really want them. And then it could flip to the complete opposite edge and, and turn into like a binging thing. So I don't believe in restriction at all. I think that balance is really subjective, but there is something to be said for, for balance and having a little bit of whatever makes you feel good, but just understanding what makes you feel good and understanding the way to consume these things that's going to make you feel your best and that you're really noticing what's going on. Do you ever eat anything that would be like cookies, pizza, cake, anything like that once in a while? For sure. Absolutely. I have the biggest sweet tooth. It's insane. I have dessert like every day. (laughs) What does your dessert look like? I love a good baked good, like brownies, cookies. And I also love baking. But what I try to do is that I'll try to make it as healthy as possible. So like, I don't eat, I don't have any sugar in my house. Like I don't have, you know, I don't really cook with sugar. I'll try to use honey or maple syrup or something like that or dates. Um, so I'll still definitely have the things, but I'll just do it in a way that makes me feel better. So you don't Granted, go and get. Listen, I still, I definitely still have sugar. Like I'll go have ice cream, a co- ice cream cone for sure. But like, I don't have that in my house, you know? Yeah, I think that's a big thing because if you have it in your house, you're going to use it. You're going to eat it. But if it's outside of your house, then it's really going to be once in a while treat. Yeah. And that's that's something that I've worked on with clients a lot too um, is like I've I've said, okay, well, let's try not having these things in your house. And like, it doesn't matter. I'll go to the store and I'll buy it. Like I'll, I'll, you know, drive to the grocery store at 10 o'clock at night or I'll drive to get ice cream. And I've been there myself too, where you've restricted yourself all day and you're like, screw it, I just need it. And that is like a lot stronger than any, you know, could self-control. So sometimes it's not that. Sometimes it is having it in your house and knowing that it's okay and, and kind of making it less of like this scary thing that's off limits and more like, yeah, I have it. I don't need it. I don't really want it right now, you know? For example, like with nut butter is a, an, an interesting thing that comes up often. And it's something that a lot of my clients have expressed to me that they, they'll they binge eat and like, you know, eat spoonfuls of nut butter. So a lot of the time I'm like, I know I just shouldn't keep it in the house. And I'll say, well, we can get to a point where you keep it in your house and you're just, you know, eating intuitively in a way that allows you to have a spoonful there. And that's not a bad thing or have it on a sandwich and not feel like you're going to, you know, it's going to be a crazy situation. So it varies. So how exactly do you combine the science of behavior analysis and the more holistic approach of integrative wellness to help your clients? Are there any really good examples? Yeah. So I think, I think what is the best example of this is how I do an initial, it's called a goal setting call. So break down the goals. And a lot of the time people will come to me and be like, okay, I want to go to the gym more and I want to eat healthier. And those are really, really big goals, right? So breaking those goals down into achievable and sustainable, you know, day-to-day things is going to be a lot easier than just like, okay, yeah, let's, let's address that. Let's get you to eat healthier. And these are what, you know, vegetables you should be eating and yada, yada, yada. Because like I said, it's not about should. And, and a lot of the, the health coaching that I went through, like the schooling for it was, was, you know, coach your clients to eat these vegetables and these are, these, you know, grains are bad and blah, blah, blah. But I'm not a believer in that. It's, and through all that um, schooling, I learned how to navigate like the science of food and stress and sleep and kind of took my own spin on it when it comes to behavior. So that goal setting call, um, if it was, I want to go to the gym more and I want to eat healthier, we'd break it down, right? So, okay, you want to go to the gym more? What's your baseline? What are you, how, how often are you going to the gym now? Well, right now I don't go to the gym at all. I don't even belong to a gym, but I want to definitely go every day. So obviously going from not belonging to a gym to going to the gym every day, that's likely setting you up for success, for, for uh, like failure, um, not setting yourself up for success. So a way to do it would be small reinforcing goals. So for example, okay, first goal in this next week is to just join a gym, like scout some gyms out, join a gym you really like. And then once that's done, maybe we build on it and we say, okay, now let's say, let's go to the gym two to three times a week. That means if you go to the gym twice, you're proud of yourself. If you go to the gym five times, you're proud of yourself. But if you made the goal, I'm going to go to the gym seven times and you only went three, 
then that's not going to be as reinforcing. So it's all about it's all about setting these small achieve, achievable goals and making sure they're sustainable and able to be maintained and then building on them from there. So what if we're really stuck in maybe a bad behavior pattern, whether eating or lifestyle? Why do you consider balance to be bullshit and what should we be focusing on instead? So what can be be difficult here is getting in this mindset of like of, of the balancing the balancing is, is something that we see all the time like on social media or on podcasts or whatever and it's like balance is key but what it comes down to is figuring out uh, what works for you right it's all about the intuition and it, a lot of the time it's it's easier said than done which is why you know I help clients do it because I have this background and kind of like outside you in <laughs> So if you're in this behavior pattern and you feel like there's no way out, right? There's, there's like the nut butter thing, for example, if you're like, I can't stop eating nut butter, like buy the spoonful and I tell myself I won't do it. And I don't buy it when I go grocery shopping, but then it's after dinner, it's eight o'clock at night and I go to Whole Foods and I buy peanut butter and I eat the whole jar. And they're like, no, I've tried everything. I've tried, you know, intermittent fasting. I've tried, um, you know, chewing gum after dinner, whatever it is. So my whole thing is, well, what's actually the root of the problem? What's happening here? Maybe you're not eating enough. Like maybe you haven't had enough protein. Maybe there aren't enough um, like healthy fats throughout your day. Maybe your dinner was too small and you're still genuinely hungry. Or maybe nut butter is this crazy thing that's off limits to you, and now you're you're um, really craving it more than you ever needed to be. Or maybe you live with someone who's eating something after dinner, and you put these rules on yourself, and you feel like oh, they're doing it, but I can't. And that's, you know, driving you to want to just do it. So getting to what's actually happening and figuring that out, like what's the MO here, what's going on and how can we build on from there? So instead of saying like, okay, no, no, not butter. Let's not keep it in the house. Let's brush your teeth after dinner. Go to sleep early, blah, blah, blah. Like that's not actually solving what's going on. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So let's say someone's working with you. They got their eating right they're getting the appropriate amount of exercise, they feel good, they're not overly stressing out their bodies, but they're still being constantly bombarded with health-related content. How do we Mm -hmm. even know if we should be adding something or changing something up when we get all this new information or a new study pops up? Yeah, so new studies is one thing. That can be a lot. I, I myself am always looking for research on things and there can be a lot of things that that conflict or the research is misleading or um, the subject of the research, like I have nothing to do with me, but I just read the conclusion and that's, you know, it seems good. So the research thing is a whole thing by itself. And that's kind of why I'm here is to navigate that. My background um, is in research. I've done a lot of research myself. So I, I feel like I, I like to think that I am the one who can like disseminate that to my clients. But when it comes to all the content, like all the Instagram stuff, the articles, the podcasts, the whatever, um, I think feeling like you have a strong intuition is definitely a big one. Like I said, sometimes that takes a while to get to, but I think it's certainly worth it. Um, Sometimes it takes a little help to achieve, but again, I think it's really worth it because if you're confident in what you're doing and confident in how you're eating, confident, you know, your exercise your routine and all that and things can pop up and you're like okay yeah cool like I know what works for me I don't need to be reintroducing something else or taking this out or yada yada um and you feel really strong in that I think also like unfollow <laughs> if there are things telling you like what you shouldn't shouldn't be doing and it's exhausting unfollow it don't listen to it or um like I would check articles or I'd follow instagrams or whatever and I'm like I can't it's too much So unfollow. (laughs) Can we talk about supplements and superfoods? Do you recommend any of these? What are your favorites and why? Um, So I'm a big, big proponent of probiotics. I am a firm believer that probiotics are really, really amazing and can do wonders for your microbiome, which is kind of the hub of all things health. Um, But what's really hard about probiotics is that there are a lot of ones on the market that suck. Like to be frank, I love Seed Probiotics personally. That's the brand that I use, and they're super, super science backed. They're an amazing, amazing brand. Um, I highly recommend Seed Probiotics. Um, in terms of other supplements, it, it again, it depends. There are a lot of things out there 
that, you know, you'll see your, your blogger taking and they're like, Oh, I do this for, for hair growth. I do this. And it, it's, it's keeps me satiated or this builds muscle or whatever. Uh, most of those things that I see that sound good to me, I'll look up the research and a little nine times out of 10, it's un- the, the conclusion is unrelated to anything that I, that, you know, I want to see. Um, there's usually not a lot of research there for a lot of things, or if the research is there, it's for, um, subjects that are just, you know, like obese males and that's, <laughs> and that's not who I am. So having, you know, I'm not probably not going to have the same results they did. So I would say do your research. A lot of it you can um a lot of it you can find it's pretty digestible when it comes to certain supplements if there's something that you've heard over and over again and you're interested in i would say just you know look up the research and read it for yourself and see um superfoods i just eat your greens like i try to get greens in in every single meal i think there's there's foods that get a lot of hype and they kind of, you know, come and go. Like I remember like acai was a big thing for a while. It's still kind of lingering out there and like chia seeds, everyone reacts to all these foods really differently. Um, but I would say greens, greens, pretty much everyone can do in some way or another. There's a lot of different green options. Um, whether you eat them raw or you cook them or you juice them or whatever it is, consume as much greens as possible. It would be my, my overall, blanket statement for health (laughs) like it really applies to everyone there's not a lot of blanket statements i'll ever make when it comes to health because i really don't think it's a one-size-fits-all thing but for greens it's different (laughs) and do you have any examples of maybe clients in the past about how you helped them set health goals that were achievable and they were able to sustain them yeah um so going back to the nut butter thing is a perfect example that was not one of my clients goals when we initially spoke it was not something that came up they were just feeling really really out of control with their eating and like they needed um just some guidance and they felt like they didn't have any any self-control and it's really not about self-control it's about self-respect Like if you are shifting your mindset and thinking like, okay, what does my body really deserve right now? Like how can I treat my body with the most respect and the most love? Then you'll likely make the decisions that you want to really be making. So we worked on that. We worked on some self-love stuff. We worked on getting to the root of of what was going on. Um, We worked on like stress, all these different things because all of these factors were contributing to her feeling out of control when it came to her eating. And then um, she would call me and be like, hey, I just totally, you know, I have a thing of peanut butter in my in my house and I've been eating it and I feel completely fine because I haven't been sitting there and eating like with a spoon in the jar. I've been putting it like on my banana or I've had like a spoonful after dinner and that's it and I feel really good about it. And that for me is such a huge win because I know myself how debilitating it can be to feel like you've lost all control to food like it's it's so intense and it's so overpowering and it's just makes you feel like your body isn't even yours and there's something you know outside kind of pulling you in these different directions that you know are not aligned with where you want to be so when i check in with clients down the road and we touch on these things and they're still being sustained that's like the best (laughs) the best feeling and that's why it's so important for me to um work with clients with a system of, of maintenance and sustainability, because if maybe something works for one week and then the next week they're like, Oh, it worked last week, but you know, I I hate to say it, but I went back and I, and I like binge the peanut butter again. That's really valuable information for me. And I always tell my clients that up front, like, tell me, tell me if things don't go as planned or tell me if, you know, the idea that we came up with doesn't work because that's valuable and that's, it's never going to be maintained if we're just band-aiding. So to continue to get to whatever the root of the issue might be and to then fix it from the ground up is the best. Could you walk us through your day? What healthy habits, rituals do you use to start your morning, power through your day, and then ease down into sleep at night? I want like specific stuff, brands, apps, products, whatever it may be. Okay. Yeah. I usually wake up. Um, I live with my boyfriend and we have a rule that we like have to kiss each other when we wake up. We can't get out of bed without kissing each other because if the other person wakes up and the other one's not there, it's very sad. So (laughs) I always kiss my boyfriend because I usually wake up first and then I'll get out of bed. And as I'm getting ready um, for my day, I'll play 
a meditation, whether it's usually do like a guided meditation. Um, there's a bunch that I saved on insight timer that I really love. So I'll just kind of listen to that in my AirPods as I get ready. I have coffee. I didn't have coffee. I used to have a tea for a while, but I definitely drink coffee now. Um, I just drink black coffee in the morning and then throughout the day, really nothing special. I definitely exercise every day, six out of seven days a week. Um, I've always been really active in that way today. I did a spin class and later I'll do yoga. Um, I strength train a lot. So I definitely get exercise in whether it's a hike or one of those things. Um, and then to wind down at the end of the day, this can be really hard for me because my mind is like going, going, going all day. And I always feel like there's a million things that I always need to be doing. At the end of the day, I honestly wind down by like watching TV because it shuts my brain off. And this is not like, well, I don't do like a candlelit yoga and like journal. I'm not that kind of person. I literally just go in front of the TV and watch something with my boyfriend and fall asleep within like seven minutes because <laughs> it lets my brain just turn off and I knock out. Um, so that way I'm having some, some like love time with him. And usually there's like a candle or something cozy and then it just kind of helps me chill and I fall asleep and then I'll, you know, go to bed. I try not to be on my phone like an hour before bed, but that can be difficult. Um, I can definitely be better <laughs> at creating boundaries there, but I really don't have a crazy routine. Um, I don't, I don't journal. I don't um, do anything like, uh, you know, drink my tea while I write down my, my day ahead. I don't do anything like that. I definitely am a firm believer in feeling good about your morning. And I, I definitely have to like set myself up for success in the morning. Cause like I said, I have a tendency to just go, go, go. So that's where like the meditation, uh, plays out for me. Like that is so, so grounding and helpful for me to start my morning slowly. Um, but other than that, like, I think that it's just what makes you feel best. And this is another one of those things, just like food, where we feel like we need to get all these wellnessy things in the day and, and yoga and like go for a walk and be in nature and journal and stretch. And it's like, what, what is the most important to you? Do that. Like start with that. If it's starting your day with like a warm glass of water and that's your number one most important thing, then do it. If grad, like, you know, writing in your gratitude journal before that is most important, do it. If um, it's a morning meditation, do that. I think pick the one thing that really makes a difference for you and take it from there. Do you have like a healthy but still delicious go-to meal that you just love making? Oh, um, I eat the same breakfast every single day. And it's oats. It's a half a cup of organic oats, um, protein powder, usually vanilla. And then um, I mix that with almond milk. Or lately, I've been using flax milk, which is really good. And then, like, a tablespoon of peanut butter and either some berries or half a banana. And that is, like, my favorite breakfast in the whole world because it's good, so delicious, and it keeps me full for a while. Um, but when it comes to dinners, I think that dinner is one that's, like, ugh, I don't know what to do. There's a really easy dinner, like, formula that I'll tell clients about. And it's just like a one sheet, a one sheet, um, dinner like that. You can just throw in the oven all together and it's protein and veggies and then some kind of fat. So those are the things that you want to incorporate like during your meals, right? Protein and fat, usually a vegetable, hopefully a green. Um, and that's how you're getting your fiber as well as likely through your vegetables. So like, for example, you could do, it's the, it's, depending on the season, you could do some seasonal vegetables. You could do like butternut squash, onion, Brussels sprouts. And then you could do, um, like a few ounces of salmon and that kind of covers your, your healthy fats, your protein and your veg. So it's just like an easy interchangeable formula that, they, that you can use and cook all together in a pan or on a, like an oven. So when I'm on my period or I get sick or something, my routine completely changes. I don't work out anymore. I choose different foods. So when you're feeling out of sort or under the weather, what does your routine look like? Well, first thing I would say is, so I'm big on, on, on patterns, right? Because if you're getting to the bottom of what's happening, you need to start to realize patterns. So for me and for my period, I use 
flow app. I think it's, yeah, it's my flow. So I use that to track my period and pra- track my symptoms. And I think it's like one ninety nine, but it's really worth it. <laughs> um, so there's four different phases that we go through in a month. And those phases require different things from us or, you know, our body is requiring different things during those phases. So for example, like during one phase, you might be more prone to do something slow like yoga or during another phase, you might be really energetic and do something like spin. And maybe during that phase, you also need more fats. And through another phase, you need more protein. So that's a really, really great tool that I've been using for years is the MyFlow app um, to track all those patterns and then nourish my body in a way that makes me feel good and also helps me kind of understand like the cravings that I'm having or, or the things that my body is going through and then adjust accordingly. So that being said, I've side note, but I basically have like no period symptoms after I got this app and, and follow these patterns and really listen to what my body needed. Like I really don't have cramps. I really don't have like PMS or any of those things because I'm able to nourish my body and give it what it needs. But if I'm ever feeling like yucky and just kind of like sick or tired or whatever it might be, I do definitely supplement. I have this crazy, um, these crazy pills. I don't even know what they're, what they're called, but they're like a cult thing. And they're these huge pills and you're supposed to take six of them twice a day. It's all natural ingredients. It's like homeopathic. Um, and they taste disgusting. They're like really garlicky, but that's what I'll do. And usually it'll knock it out. And I also just hydrate like crazy. I, uh, I just got the best water bottle ever. It's, <laughs> it's a huge insulated water bottle with a straw, making it so easy to drink water all day. So, um, definitely most of us, at least in my experience are not getting enough water. And I think that that can be a huge game changer. So a lot of the times we don't drink enough water cause it's not reinforcing, uh, either you like spill on yourself or it's annoying to open the cap or it's like too difficult to get to water or whatever it is. So that's something that I work with my clients a lot on also. It's like, first of all, get a water bottle that's really reinforcing to you. And maybe it's something with a straw or maybe it's a cool color or maybe, um, you know, whatever you're drawn to. And then also making water breaks like fun. So having it be like a little rest if you're in working in an office and you need to go fill up your water bottle like go and do it and make that time like a second to take a deep breath and check in with yourself there's all these little rituals that you can do to to feel your best and make some time for yourself throughout your day yes and i think most people don't get enough water and myself yep. included so what are some specific ways that people can work with you online or in person yeah so pretty much at this point, all my coaching is 100% virtual. So it's all online. Um, I have a couple of different program options that I offer. I used to kind of be like willy nilly about it. And then I realized that formula that that works. And based on our our goal setting call, I'll suggest the 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 kind of path that I think is best. Um, But all of that information is on my website. And um, how it starts is that we would just have kind of like a check in call and and get to know each other and see what's up and see if it's a good fit. Um, see if, you know, you you vibe with me, if I vibe with you, and if I can, you know, think that I'd be able to help. And then from there, we would have the goal setting call, get really, really clear on your goals and, and how we would achieve them, create a roadmap for that. And then from there, I would assess and, and recommend a certain amount of time to work together. And then we would have a weekly phone call and then unlimited correspondence in between there. Um, so some sustainability work built in, um, some homework built in, but that's typically how it goes. And let everyone know how they can find you online, website, Instagram, everything. Yeah, my website is root to risehealthcom and that's exactly what my Instagram is too. So just root to rise health. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kelly, for being with us here today. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to the episode. If you made it this far, I'm sure you found some benefit to the hard work that I put into the show. Show your support by subscribing to the podcast. Leave me a voicemail question or email me at thehealthfulgypsy at gmail.com. I would love, love, love to hear from you. Be sure to join the Facebook group. You can find all that information in the show notes and my website, katkatibi.com.
This podcast is for informational merrymaking and metaphysical purposes only. Statements and views are not medical advice. This podcast, including Kakatibi, disclaim any adverse effects by the use of information you may have heard. Opinions of guests are totally their own. This podcast does not endorse statements made by guests. This podcast does not make any representations or warranties about guest qualifications, credibilities, or sanity. Individuals may have a direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to on the podcast. If you think you have a medical problem, consult with a licensed medical physician, not just the spirit of your ancestors while on ayahuasca.